Robert Fergoso is his name. He became a millionaire at 19. He's managed over 10,000 house flips and his company recently got sold for $1 billion. I spent a day with him so I can see what the house flipping business is all about. So we're at the first property here. This is a client's property. He's in the middle of remodeling it. Got a killer deal on it. And we're gonna talk to him about the numbers. He's basically completely remodeling this house. He picked up an extra bath inside and then picked up an extra 700 square feet and converting a basement to an ADU. So that's an accessory dwelling unit if you're not in California. We'll talk to Peyton right now about his uh, numbers. So come on in, let's take a look. Peyton, what's happening, hey, man? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. How you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to see you. Peyton, nice to see you. Take a look at your project here. Yeah. I mean, it looks like it's coming along pretty good. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah we kill it. some inspections this morning. So you wanna tell us about your, uh, like the numbers? Here. I bought it for 810 plus a 50,000 assignment fee. Right. I paid to the uh, wholesaler. All right. I have a hold back. I think it's like 150 or something like that on it. All right. So we're going to use every bit of that. What's so a hold back? It's an amount that you actually pay and then the bank holds that and then distributes it back to you as you do construction. Rather than use his purchase price as the value of the property, this is what the property will be worth once it's fixed up. This is how much it's going to take to get it to that point. So we hold that money so we can use that higher appraisal amount. Every time he gets a draw, the equity is being created because he's doing more and more work. You said you got your deal from a wholesaler, right? Yeah. Is that how you usually get most of your deals? I do random deals. I mostly work for these guys. So Payne's a contractor and he's stepping out doing like the rehab now on his yeah. own. So in this case, the wholesaler made about $50,000. So they got it for eight ten, dollars sold it to him for eight sixty. dollars Yeah. And then he's going to fix up and resell it for... Hopefully one four one five. Eight sixty dollars plus one fifty. dollars plus one fifty. dollars He's into it for essentially a million ten plus costs. He sells it for a million four. He's got almost $300,000, $400,000 there of gross equity. He may net 300 of that number if he gets one five, may net 400. So rather than the guy who just took the 50. He's not having to do any of the headaches. Yeah, yeah. He can do everything. six in the amount of time that I did one. There, there's pros and cons. Both there's pros and, pros and cons. Tools. What did you see in this property that made you think it was a good deal? Actually, I'm no expert on looking at values. I talked to guys like Robert and asked their opinion. It just worked out. Do you come in with the funding? No, no, well. Yeah, you gotta have the money to put down. Yeah. I'm new to the game. I had to put 25% down. Risk reward. Same thing from the lending side, right? If we're doing the loans, then we just kind of assess, hey, here's what the risk is versus the repairs. So the risk with someone who's just starting, even though he's a contractor, is that they miss things walking through. Today, we're going to walk around because he called me up and he's like, hey, can you help me out with the landscape? And now I wanted to see what the property's like so I can go tell him, hey, here's what I think you should do. You mentioned that you're creating an ADU? An, yeah, an accessory dwelling unit. To increase the value. Right. So when I bought the house, I had a basement that was already built. It wasn't on title. There was no permits for it. But when I, I found an old set of the blueprints, I was able to take those plans to my architect. He drew me a plan to legalize the basement into an accessory dwelling unit. Excuse me. Whoever buys this house can look at that as something that they can rent out yeah. as income. There's a lot of benefits to it, but the biggest benefit is that now when he markets it for sale, it's no longer 1,100 and something square feet. Now it's gonna be 1,800 square feet, right? Yeah, and how much did it increase the property value? A few hundred thousand probably. A few hundred thousand. Uh, yeah. Oh, you're getting, you're, you're getting a thousand a foot down oh. there. Even if he got half of that, yeah. right? Seven, that's 350,000 in equity he picked up. Reutilizing square footage that was already here. So what did you spend to do the new one for? Not much, I think I'm in like four grand or something. I was asking you the style that you're going for. Are you going more on the like modern farm? Like, like modern. contemporary? Okay. Like modern, yeah. So these are gonna be two glass doors I'm putting in here. Why put a door here? Well, because it's a laundry room. This will be a stackable here. Why Why a stackable instead of just going- Just going side by side? Yeah, I, I would okay. do it side by side. That what? takes care of that problem for you. Yeah, you got a pool? Yeah, I got yeah, a pool, no, I saw we, that. Re, we redid all that. Oh, bro, you're killing it. Hold on, let me show you this <laughs> one. Go back there, Robert. You're gonna kill it. We added this bathroom. Okay. This, was, uh, this was actually just a cook closet at the end of this hallway. So this becomes the, the common bath. This becomes a master bath. All right, so let me ask. So you got this area, you got a nice living room. To go outside, then how do you, you gotta walk through the laundry room? So that's the one negative I would say about the house. Why is that a negative? If, especially if it's a young family and this is a young family area. They're cooking, they're doing something, and they can watch the kids in the backyard at the same time. In this scenario, you really can't because all your bedrooms are in the back. I wouldn't say it's like a major negative at all. Especially you got a pool, right? Yeah. So if you got younger kids, they can't really keep track of what's going on if the kids are playing in the back. All right, let's see your ADU here. They almost doubled the size of the house here, right? Just for that ADU right there. So you're at seven feet, right? I'm at seven feet. Barely. Barely, barely. Seven foot is the minimum height that you can have. Oh, so and so and so when you walked in, you can automatically see like, hey, this is lower than let's say upstairs, right? You should have a short person do your inspections here. How tall is the inspector? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> to be included in the square footage where they would give you a 100% value from an appraisal standpoint, then you have to have direct access to the house. So, all right, so landscaping wise, I mean, this could be an outdoor kitchen, right? You got three bedrooms, two baths, right? Oh, you're only two bedrooms? Plus this one. How the fuck can we get a third bedroom back there? Let's go look. I didn't catch that. So 1,100 square feet, usually you can pick up a three bedroom, two bath. So can you open this up? Cause I'm trying to see like right now when you walk in, you're kind of walking into this instead of like this. It is what it is, it's a two two. You might just find a single guy, whatever that, yeah. I mean, you're still gonna kill it. <laughs> See the roof line was original and then you can see where it tied in it dips in that's when you instantly know that hey there's probably some stuff that's not permitted there's, or you need permits right? well there's stuff that we need to like investigate further to try to figure out don't ignore it because you think it's a good deal it's kind of when people are in a bad relationship and then after they leave and they're like she was a bitch or he was an asshole or whatever you know and, yeah and it's the same thing with the you house. usually see the red flags in the beginning so we're here at our second property and we're gonna see if it's a good property to flip we're gonna walk through take a look it's the first time walking in see what we see let's do it like this is lower than it should be, right? So this might Yeah, be. it needs to be seven feet, right? Yeah, a minimum seven feet. So what's the asking price for this property? I think it's in contract at a million, million one, let's say. Oh, okay. It's pretty big. Yeah. Hey, can I just take a peek in here? Good, by well. yourself. We're just doing an inspection right now. Oh. It's like a pre-inspection and then right. they'll, they'll handle all the other part. Right. All right, let's take a look here. So fire damage downstairs. Looks like it might be nailed shut. Yeah. Mm. So this is what's legal here. Yeah. Sorry. So what are you looking for right now in this property? I'm just looking for all the signs that may or may not show what's permitted and what's not. That structure. Yeah. Like if you look at that stucco there. Yeah. That looks like that's the old garage. They converted it into a room and then they added this part as another garage mm. to the front of it. What happens if something's not permitted? You guys have to tear it down? I have to do whatever the city says to do. So how much is it for a permit? Uh, it getting just, something permitted. Well, it depends. So getting something permitted is one thing, right? So the cost of permits are generally based on the amount of the cost of the repairs. Yeah. And so they make their percentage or whatever it is that they charge. If you spend less, then you you spend less. These rafters, yeah. like that's pretty far apart. That, is so, that a bad thing? Well, it tells me that this is probably not permitted. So you have two options. You can either, you have to either tear it down or you have or, to get a permit for it. Right, and which, yeah. I mean, getting a permit for something that's done wrong. It's possible that at one point- You might have to tear everything down. Well, I mean, we don't know yet. Yeah. That we got to figure that out. So what can you do to prevent risk? You just get the, the right inspections to make sure you don't have to tear you, everything you down? You get the right inspections. So on this one here, we couldn't tell what's legal and what's not. And then if you do have to tear everything down, then you obviously don't buy the deal, right? Try to get it, it for cheaper. Yeah, well, I mean, just renegotiate something that's fair for everybody. Yeah. Where are the comps around here? Well, I'll tell you what, we'll take a look at them. Okay, so this back here burned. I mean, that's that deck. I wouldn't stand on that for sure. Oh, oh, we yeah. We didn't see this room, <laughs> right? Yeah. What's gonna uh, be able to stay first and then what can't stay and then we can figure out what we can fix. So what would you do to fix this since this is like just but, completely- So this part here? Tarnished. Yeah, I would probably get rid of the deck and then you have to open up the flooring upstairs. Would you remove this wall right here? Uh, I wouldn't remove the wall. This is gonna be for sure a bearing wall, right? You just have to paint over it or something, right? When it's fire damage, it's basically you're gonna go down to the studs and then go back. The outside stuff can stay if it's okay. If the wall's okay, then you're pretty much gonna leave the wall and then the interior is, is what's gonna get redone. Right. Right. Usually the ARV is 30% of what you purchased it for, right? So this is going to be more because it's so much work. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. It's showing us 2,088 square feet, mm -hmm. 7,200 square foot lot, two stories. So it shows a lot of this that may be permitted. So you can already tell that we've got multifamily next to us. So we're looking for comparable sales that are within the same density. So even this house over here mm -hmm. sold for a million four sixty. There's one at a million one six. This is one unit too, right? Or how many units is this? Well, I mean, they're renting out the rooms. It's really just a house is what it is legally. It's five rooms, right? 
Yeah, so it appraised, fixed up, if it's the right square footage, at a million seven. All right, so we got a lot of homework to do on this one. So on this one here, yeah. what I would recommend to, if you're just starting out, yeah. reach out to three, what I call market share agents in the area. Mm -hmm. So it's the agent that would have their name on like the grocery cart or something like that. Yeah. And so they know the area really well. Oh, okay. And I would probably get, try to get a consensus of three people. That's, That's just, a golden nugget right there. Th that is- To get the ARV. I'll tell you what. Just that, call real estate agents in the area. That was one of the bases, because you can't be an expert in every area. I've done that for 30 years. This wow. is what we've done. You can't go That's wrong on the ARV if you call real estate agents. If, if you're calling the agents yeah. that are selling this area yeah. and you get a consensus of three people that all agree, yeah. it's very rare where they'll all be wrong. If the market changes, that's completely different. Yeah, they can't do anything about that. When you're flipping, you can only make the right decision with the information you have at that time. Exactly. That's it. So that's yeah. what we do. Just from looking at it, how much do you think everything would cost for the repairs? Well, it's 2,000 square feet. I would put this at uh, 300. 300. Yeah. The wholesaler got it for 1.1, right? Right. And then how much is he trying to sell it to you for? 1.2. So 100K, right? Right. Wow. He, if it got appraised at 1.7, then right. you're going to make 200K profit, right? If, well, gross. But after costs and everything else, it's too tight. We can't fix this for 200. I'm sure there's going to be violations from the city. So do you think it's worth it? For me? Yeah. My time's worth more than spending that much time on one project. Yeah. I could lose out on other projects. Now, if it was a home run deal and we we're getting it for 700, mm -hmm. I'd say let's, let's then it's worth the time. The I, main thing you should look for is if some of the stuff in the property needs permits, right? Right. That's the main thing. Thing. Anything that looks out of the norm is an instant red flag. Kind of like a Mickey Mouse job. If you're starting off, this is the one to stay away from. That house is messed up. <laughs> that is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde here. Yeah, um, honestly, I don't even know where to start. That house was so bad. You'll see the other house that we're gonna go to right now. Okay. It has a lot of stuff. Yeah. You'll see it's pretty bad. We are at our third property. We're gonna see if it's a good deal. There was a little incident that happened last year. Robert, do you wanna share a little more about the story? Yeah, so this house we call the murder house. And, Why's that? And so the reason is that there was a double homicide here at this house. Wow. In fact, it was caught, caught on a Zoom meeting. The mom that lived here was on a Zoom call while the attack started. They're the ones who actually called the police. It was actually the son who stabbed his mom, killed her, and then stabbed his uncle somewhere on the driveway here. It's listed really low. It's listed for, you know, 675. Yeah. Over 10 or 15 offers. Mm. Take a look and see what we can pay for. Do you feel like that story is going to affect the ARV in any way? The market's so hot that we think that it will affect some buyers, and some buyers will say, absolutely not. They see it, and they see that it's all brand new and completely done. They won't have that feeling, and then they'll be like, They won't okay, care anyways. Won't yeah. Care. Right. Cool. Let's go take all a right, look. Let's take a look. So what are we looking for besides the permits? I already pulled the permit history ahead of time. When I looked online, I looked at the aerial and I could see that the house itself um, had a couple of additions. And indeed those two additions were permitted. So I think we're good from that standpoint. We're just gonna walk through and see what we need to do to fix this up and make it presentable and, uh, and good for the next family. It already looks like it's in decent condition. So there's probably not that much work that has to be done, right? Let's take a walk around and see what we got. I don't know that we can save this flooring. It's in pretty rough shape. And I, I saved some flooring that you would think you're not. It's not perfectly flat it feels oh, a little yeah. like wobbly right what would you have to do to fix that a lot of times it might just be over the years there's been earthquakes so some of the piers may have just shifted it could be water leaks or it could be a ton of different reasons why we'll figure that out when they get underneath the house this right here is where the mom was actually stabbed and killed oh my gosh and so if you notice here they've removed this section of wood oh man and so that's because the blood that it's soaked in is considered hazardous so they it's a biohazard so they just cut it out and then redo it oh man we're hoping that this house yeah. is going to go for 1.7 or something like that. So we're going to. And you guys really got it for 650, you said? No, well, they're asking 675. Yeah. Um, we ultimately paid a million dollars for it. Because there's a bidding war. There's a bidding war, right. It's decent. It's a decent deal. We'll get yeah. to do the house, bring it back to what it's going to be. And our plan for it is going to be completely different to revamp it. So we can walk through right now. You have the kitchen. So it does have a basement, but it's not a full size basement. Yeah. But you look at the backyard. Yeah. This isn't really a usable backyard here. We're going to make the front yard quasi backyard front yard. What are you guys going to do with this right here? These trees I'm, I'm considering just getting rid of. This isn't really going to be a functional little spot here. So this is just going to be kind of a little garden. I'll tell you the concept once we go through. How much valley can a, a pool bring? In this area? Yeah. You don't usually do them. So if we put a $45,000 pool, if we can get 90 out of it, mm. then you would do it. In this area, I don't know that that would be the, the you would get that much out. Got the kitchen here, the laundry room. We're gonna have to fix the floor plan to make it usable for someone to kind of live in here. Two bedrooms here, bathroom, I and mean, this is a good sized bathroom. 
Looking so, so far, there's not too much work that needs to be done to this property, right? It, it, it needs everything. This is bedroom number three that we're in. Bedroom number four, this is the backyard over here, right? And then this is the front yard. And so our idea right now, there's two options. The cheaper version is to make this the master. Yeah. Do you think that you'll get more value from the master bedroom or you're having more bedrooms? I think having the master bedroom in this area, I think you'll you'll, you'll get more value out of it. Why is that? I think <clears> that people that are paying a million, five million, seven for a house, yeah, it would expect to have a nice master bedroom. Is somebody still living here? No. How long has it been vacant for? Well, they were murdered in like 2020 or 2021. Right? Oh, wow. How do you make this house attractive for someone who wants to entertain, right? Yeah. And so we'll raise the ceiling here and then we'll put the kitchen here and make this the kitchen and then open that up to the living room on the other side. Mm. So you'll have two masters actually that way. We're gonna wrap up this video. Robert, I wanna thank you for taking the time and showing us how to run numbers on these flips. If you guys wanna get in contact with Robert, you can reach him at his Instagram. At Robert Fragoso Jr. Is there anything else you wanna say? If you're looking at getting into the business, you can always either partner with me and I'll put up all the money and we can split the profits. Just borrow from me and then do the deal yourself or you can just sell to me and make it super easy and then you're done, you got your money and I'll take care of everything else. Awesome. All right, well, we'll catch you guys later. Thanks for watching. Thanks. Hey, Hey, did you guys move that cabinet? What do you mean? Well, I don't know. I don't remember walking around the cabinet to go to like the back little room. I mean, we may have to go back to the video. Oh man. I thought that cabinet was moved over this way. It's kind of just in the middle of the door now. Not this one. Yeah. This one back here. I Whoa. Thought, I thought this was over. Yo. Right? Yeah, I don't remember seeing that. Yeah. <laughs> just don't come here by yourself.